this year, or no, sorry, next year, I enter into my 80th birthday. Amen? I, 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 I cannot believe it because I don't feel a day over, uh, younger than 85. <laughs> And it's good to be alive. It's good to have the presence of God. It's good to have the anointing. I make no excuse today that we are a Pentecostal church. You take Pentecost out of the gospel and what have you got left? You got no light. You just got religion. And religion won't cut it, will it? We need a move of the spirit. And I thank God that it doesn't matter how old you are. There are promises in this book that says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will rise up as on wings of eagles. Amen. They shall run and not be weary. They shall what? Not faint. Amen. Is there any more? <laughs> We're on a bit of a roll there. Uh, took my dogs for a walk this morning and they were trotting along and it's just beautiful in the forest and just enjoying the presence of God. God is very, very real. I was just hanging out with Jesus, with the dogs. And Jesus was there with us. Amen. This is an amazing phase that we're going into, I believe. I believe today that uh, we're just going to leave some stuff behind and embrace the new year. Embrace the new venture. The new journey. Whatever God's got for us because it's going to be good. You see... What we believe and what we say will set our course for 2020. It's what you believe and what you say will set the course for 2020. We can just say, oh, well, it'll be same old, same old. Or else we can somehow or other embrace something so dynamic and so fresh and get excited about it. Anybody else excited about the future? I am so excited about what God is in my life, in the lives of many, many people. We can say same old, same old, or I found a new way of living. <laughs> we used to sing that song and sing that song and sing that song. I've found a new way of living. I can't remember the next line. <laughs> what? I have the what? I have the fruit of the Spirit. I'm abiding, abiding in the vine. Are you abiding in the vine today? Are you locked in? Are you hooked in? Are you, are you drawing from His strength or are you drawing for, from your own emotions? Are you regurgitating all the hurts and disappointments? Or are you rejoicing in the good things that God has done? I found a whole new way of living. Once I was lost, but now I'm found. No matter what state we find ourselves in today, Jesus is the answer for every situation that we face. He's the answer. And she's obviously been touched by God. <laughs> Quietest I've ever seen her. <laughs> yeah, me too, says mum. It's the answer for everything. Matthew 9, 7 says, According to what you believe. It's according to what you believe. Let's have a little read of Matthew. Is it all right to open up the book? Matthew 9, 27. And Jesus departed from there. Two blind men followed him, crying out, saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he came into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? And I believe that's the great question to the church today. Do we really believe that Jesus is the answer? Do you really believe that Jesus could touch Cheyenne? Do you, do you really believe that Jesus can touch Australia and turn it around 
and cause the fire that's burning in the natural now to be a fire of the Spirit that will burn through our nation and consume every work of Satan and every lying devil and everything that stands against the church. Do you believe? These guys are yelling out and it could have been a religious thing. Jesus, have mercy on us. But then Jesus brings them in when they come into the room. Do you believe that I am able to do this? And they said to him, yes, Lord. And he touched their eyes saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. And I believe that today that God is breathing again on the church. And I believe that what he's looking for is faith. Where somehow or other we will put aside all the negative thinking that can come into our mind and allow the word of God, when God says something, to it to penetrate into our heart until it becomes ours. And we can stand and say, God, I believe with every fiber of my being that Australia is going to see a move of the Spirit. Do you believe that he can do this? And they said, yes. According to your faith. I can't find where I was. <laughs> 29. And he touched their eyes saying, according to your faith, be it to you. And their eyes were opened. Their eyes were opened. I'm asking you today that faith would rise within your church. And Lord, that our eyes would be opened in Jesus' name. And that the revealer of truth would be able to reveal to us the awesome majesty and power and dominion that is in the name of Jesus. That one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And one day, Lord, we're going to see your appearing. And oh, what a great day that will be. And everybody said, amen, amen and amen. You see, God watches over his word. Watches over it to perform it. God gets great delight, I believe, in seeing his children reaching out in faith. Though the situation in that young girl's life is impossible in the natural for me to do anything about, but in the realm of the Spirit, nothing is too hard for God. Nothing is too difficult. And I believe that God gives great delight in watching a bunch of people getting around an impossible situation, reaching out with the measure of faith that we have, Reaching out to him saying, God, would you touch? Would you move? Would you do it? And he says, if you believe it, all things are possible. I believe he gives great delight in seeing his word because he watches over it. And somehow or other, when, when, when faith touches God, power is released, amen. If you remember, there was a woman who had an issue of blood and she walked and she pushed through the crowd and she touched the hem of his garment. She said, because I believe that if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. You see, it's what she believed brought the miracle. And when she touched the hem of his garment, Jesus stood still. And he said, who's touching me? The disciples said, there are many that are thronging you and touching you. But he said, no, he said, hang on. Somebody touched me in faith. And virtue has flown out of me. I want to tell you, I believe that God wants to pour virtue, his power, back into the church. Lift up your hand if you want a dose of the ghost. <laughs> Come on, lift up your hand. Say, God, I need a double dose. I need you to touch me afresh. I need the anointing, the anointing, the anointing to go into 2020. I need a, a double portion of your spirit and I'll give you all the praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen and amen. Watches over his word to perform it. 
your word, you know, Mary said these words, according to your word, be it unto me. That's in uh, Luke one thirty eight. According to your word, Lord, be it unto us. According to your word, touch us, Lord, touch us today. A centurion soldier pleaded with Jesus to heal his servant. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him, Matthew 8, 5. Once the centurion knew that he had found favour with God and that God was going to come and heal his servant, Jesus said, I'll come, I'll come. He said, hey, you don't have to come. Just speak your word. Just send your word. Speak your word. Send your word and my servant will be healed. He said, because I am a man under authority. And I speak to this one and I say, go, and he goes. And I say, come, and he comes. And I know that every devil, every sickness, and every disease is subject to your name, subject to your word. Just send your word and, it will be he and my servant will be healed. And Jesus looked at his disciples and he said, I have not seen such great faith. See, faith really is simply believing what God says. Faith is just believing what God says to you and me. Faith really should not be all that difficult. But there's a hairy-legged animal out there that wants to take us and bring lies into our thinking. Just send your word or speak your word. Luke 4, 4, it says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God, whether we like it or not. Let's have a look at the book of John. John 1, we all most probably know this off by heart. John 1, verse 1. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overwhelm it it or overcome it in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God this I, I tell you what God has invested so much in his word he watches over this word he watches over it he's wanting, wanting you and I to learn about it to speak it to know its truth. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he not spoken it? Will he not bring it to pass? If Jesus said, by my stripes you are healed, there's only one thing that will stop healing from coming, is unbelief. Hardness of men's hearts. I want to tell you there's only one place that you can really find and have your heart softened. It's in the presence of an almighty God. With your hands lifted high, with your heart wide open, where God can come by His Spirit and soften even the hardest of hearts. He watches over His Word to perform it. I believe that we're living in exciting days. Do you believe that today? Whether we like it or not, in the beginning, all things were made by his word. Where is his word? Where is this word? It's not just a book that we glance at now and then. Not just something there that we read from time to time. God's word is so powerful. It is so powerful. Let's have a quick look in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews. Chapter 2.
says therefore. When you see a therefore, what do you do? You got to see what it's there for. <laughs> therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. Friend, I want to tell you it's possible for the church, for a believer, to drift away from the truth that's in this book. We've got to take the more earnest heed to the things that we have heard. Things that we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proves steadfast, everybody say steadfast. Steadfast. <laughs> you can't shift that. It, it's immovable. You cannot take anything out of it. You cannot water it down. You can't do something with it that takes the power out of it. The word spoken through angels proved steadfast. And every transgression and disobedience received a just reward or a just penalty. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? How shall we escape if we neglect? And I think that the church, we have many times neglect, neglected. We've added our own thinking. We've added our own however we want to read it. It doesn't really mean that. It, 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 it really, no, no, God, God wouldn't do that. And so we put our own interpretation on it. Friend, we need the Holy Ghost interpretation on the Word of God like never before. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Escape means, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Escape the snare of the fowler. As I walk through the forest, there's lots of very large spider webs and nests and some fairly large spiders there. And the whole purpose in that snare is that whatever goes into it will be devoured. And the enemy sets up snares to devour you, to take out what God has put in there. Escape the trap that will bring you into captivity. Traps bring people into cap cap captivity. Escape the temptation that leads to destruction. If we neglect, neglect so great a salvation. You see, salvation is not just going to heaven. Salvation incorporates everything. Deliverance, healing, freedom, joy, whatever else you want to put into it. It's total deliverance, total freedom, total life. Life comes into you, amen. Receive life more abundantly. God doesn't want people walking around like a bunch of deadheads. I say this many times and I have to remind myself, don't die till you're dead. Too many people die before they're dead. They die to their, to their purpose, to the plan of God. To everything. I've seen teenagers that are already dead. No vision. Without a vision, people dwell carelessly. They had a purpose. We ne neglect so great a salvation is to deny what the Word of God says. If you neglect your garden, weeds grow and it doesn't produce. If you neglect your life, weeds will grow around your life and there'll be no life or you won't produce anything. If you ne neglect your car, it'll break down, rust out. If you neglect your family, you will lose them. God's word in Matthew 6.33 says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you.
I believe that God wants to bring increase around our life. I believe that God really wants to bring increase into our lives. What things does God really want to do? What things will God want to add to you? All these things shall be added unto you. You know what he wants to add to you? Everything that you need. <laughs> whatever you need. Whatever you have need of. You can neglect the word of God and be led by our emotions and not the spirit. The word of God comes from our heart through our mouth. What words we speak will produce life or death. Life and death are in, the, in, are in our words. The disciples asked, how should we pray? That's a good thing to ask God. Why don't we have a look at Matthew chapter 6. A lot of people think that this is the prayer, but it's not a prayer, it's how to pray. Matthew's in here somewhere. I've got so many lovely books in here. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as a heathen, for they think that they will be heard by their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things that you have need of before you ask Him. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And though he was answering a question, immediately he says this, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive them their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Father, I'm going to ask you today that just by your spirit, you help us to simply come into your presence, to simply come to you and as, as, we, as we leave 2019 and enter into 2020, Lord, we, we pray and we know how to pray. But Lord, there's some things that we've neglected. We've neglected some things like forgiveness. We've neglected some things like your word when you've spoken to us. We've neglected stuff, my God, that I pray today that you would remind us of. Pray, Father, today that you would just help us to go into this new, whole new decade. It's got a whole new, oh my God, oh, <laughs> gifts that are, you want to us to go and unravel gifts of life and ministries and things, my God, that's just going to be open to us. Father, I ask you today, help us. Help us see you, Father. And we'll just give you all the praise and all the worship. All the praise, all the worship. I had a lot more I was going to say today, but I just believe that this is the end of the year and that surprised everybody by having a short message. <laughs> but Father, we don't want to neglect your word. We don't want to neglect it. We're just asking you, Father, by your spirit that you'd come. Hover over us, Father. Lord, we come to a time where where we have what we call an altar call. But Lord, I'm being so aware myself that an altar call is where you can alter the call. 
better say it this way, where you can alter the destiny or the way that we've been heading, where you can turn us. And I know in my own life, my dreams and plans that I had for my life was on an altar call where you changed all that, where you altered where I was heading and I'm so glad you did. So Father, today we just come and just pray, Father, that by your Spirit you just help us. Lord, I, I just pray today that, that too we would be a people that say, Lord, take us on, take us into, take us through. Let us leave behind a lot of stuff. And you know, I'm aware this morning that there are some people, me included, I've got to leave some junk behind. It's amazing. It's amazing. I'm talking to some people recently that have just shifted house. And they've carried this stuff around and had it in their house and in their shed and they've fallen over it and skinned their knees on it and got angry with it and all of a sudden they're shifting and all that the value of that stuff as they just put trailer after trailer taking it to the tip you know I, I believe that there's a lot of stuff we've got to put to the tip got to get rid of some stuff I spoke the other week about stuff that God was dealing with in my life, things that I thought had been dealt with, that I'd only just covered it with a sheet, left it in the shed. Thank you, Jesus. This might be some things that we need to say, God, oh, I'm going to change in that area of my life. I'm going to choose to forgive people. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Whatever it might be. We're just going to stand to our feet right now. Let this be a time where perhaps God can alter something perhaps in your life. Some direction. What, I don't know. Father, I just pray that just have your way, Lord. Have your way. What are we going to sing, guys? What are we going to sing? Okay. Here's your anchor, amen? Here's your anchor. If you feel God's touching you this morning and, I don't know, God's just wanting to do something, just feel free to come. Come and stand out here in the presence of God. Come and just stand in His presence. Let, let change come about let us leave some stuff behind thank you Lord Jesus thank you Jesus as an anchor for my soul some people here and you've sort of got an impossible situation before you today and, and this thing's not just been here for today but it's something that's been around for a long time and and you've sort of got to a place where it's oh well that's life no it's not life it's that you believe the lie Jesus can deliver you Jesus can set you free doors will be open The doors will open. I want to say it again. I want to say it loud and clear. Doors will fly open. Amen. Don't take any notice of the resistance or the grumbling and the murmuring of people that have no idea 
what God is doing in your life. Don't listen to the grumblers and the murmurs. Listen to the voice of the Spirit of God. It's stronger than my voice. What I've said is only a smidgen. God's got more for you.